Hello, thank you for having me. I'm, my name is Christina Heffernan, and I'm going to be speaking about using artificial intelligence to provide efficient feedback. So before I get started, let me just uh, take a moment to introduce myself. Um, I grew up in uh, a little town north of Seattle in the United States, and I currently work just outside of Boston in Massachusetts. I uh, am the mother of two lovely uh, young men, and um, I'm married to Neil Heffernan, who is my partner in all of this work that I'm gonna be describing today. Um, he is the AI professor, and um, I am the educator. We both were teachers at one point in our lives. Um, so this story is um, our story. I'm also um, privileged to be the executive director of the Assistance Foundation, and I lead an amazing group of people um, here who are doing all of this work that I'm describing to you today. So everything we're doing um, is getting smarter. Like all of our technology, our tools are getting smarter. And a lot of that has to do with AI. And so part of the story I'm gonna to tell today is about how that happens in our world. How did we get to the place where we didn't have AI to now the place where we do have AI? And some examples that you see here are Google Maps. Google Maps um, knows where you're going. So if you're driving somewhere and there's an accident, it knows you wanna get there and it reroutes you. Um, our thermostats in our house, when the pandemic hit, um, we all started staying home and those smart thermostats uh, changed because we weren't leaving the house. So it's not, um, it's not really amazing but the question I have and the question I wanna answer for you today is how does a technology go from just being there to being smart, to having AI behind it? And so that's the story I'm gonna tell. And the context that we're gonna be in is similar to the context that um, you see in your email. So um, a few years back, my email started giving me suggestions of how to reply. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and that's using AI. The, the, in Google, they took all the responses that we ever gave. They used natural language processing to read my email, to read those other emails. And then they gave me suggestions. Um, and so the world that I'm gonna talk about today is similar, but it's within the context of education and math teaching. And so we're gonna help um, teachers give messages to their students the same way my email platform uh, suggests messages for me to send uh, to as a reply. Before I talk about that, though, um, I need to pull back and give you a little bit of information about assessments, which is the platform that my husband and I have been working on for over 15 years. And it is a free online tool that allows teachers to assign online. And it's within the context of assessments that we are able to do this AI-enabled uh, feedback. So assessments um, offers a powerful, it's a powerful formative assessment solution that saves time and money while improving math achievement. So that saves time part is what I'm gonna dig into. Um, currently, we have lots of parts of our tool that allow teachers to save time. But this AI-enabled feedback is, is even enhancing that time-saving aspect. So how does assessments do that? Well, it enhances the existing math curriculum. So here people have funded, funders have funded um, curriculum developers to create um, big curriculum and give them away for free. So we at assessments, who are a free tool can take those curricula and put them into our system. They're not, um, we're not violating anyone's copyright in doing that. So we're taking those math curriculum and we're giving actionable data to the teachers and immediate feedback to the students. This picture here describes the old way. In the old way, teachers would give assignments to their students and the students would work on them and do them at home probably, or even in the classroom. And they'd always be wondering, am I getting them right? Am I getting them right? But they just put their answers down, assuming they were getting them right, you know? And then the teacher had no way of seeing what was going on in those papers. By adding the computer and assessments, we get the assessments way. And in that sense, in that instance, as students are working on assessments, they 
can um, see if they're getting problems right or wrong as they're going. And also there's a report that the teachers can get. And they can see um, how the students are doing. I would like to take a moment to show you how assessments works. So teachers come to assessments and then from here, they enter our application and are find and assign. The first step they do then is find content that they want to give to their students and assign it to their students. As I mentioned before, we have open educational resources such as Open Up, Engage New York, uh, Kendall Hunt's Illustrative Mathematics. These are all curriculums in the United States that are published under Creative Commons. So if I click on Illustrative Math and go to seventh grade, this is the teacher's um, actions. They are going to find the lesson that they're working on. And we have uploaded all the problems from these curriculum into assessments. And from here, they get to choose the problems that they want to assign to their students and then click on assign to class. And then those are assigned to the students. The students then see the problems um, online. They access these through their LMS, like Google Classroom or Canvas. The students then read the problem, get out a piece of paper, solve the problem, and then input the answer. If they get the problem wrong, they're told, sorry, try again. And then they might try again until they get it right and then go on to the next problem. The teachers then can see a report that shows how well the students did um, on the assignment. So this is um, an assignment report that shows down the side um, the students' names, across the top the problems they're working on, and the percent correct for each problem, as well as the common wrong answers. So you might see for this problem that 20% of the students said one, and for this problem, 33% of the students said nine. This gives the teachers something to do in their next step, which is to share this data with the students and, and review how well the progress was. So that's just a quick look into assessments before we go on. So let's take a look at um, a specific problem. So here is a problem that can be given in assessments. We have um, poly polygon B and it's scaled copy A. So we know that A is a copy of B. And they're asking what the scale factor is from A to B. So we see the top bar across the top um, is 2.5 for A and 5 for B. So the scale factor is 2 from A to B. So that's nice. Answer's 2. And we do not use AI, artificial intelligence, to grade this, to score it. Um, when the student types in two, our computer just matches it to the answer two and it's marked as correct. If the student answers four or one half, it's marked as incorrect. Take the example of one half. One half could be a common wrong answer because if the scale factor from A to B is two, some students might write one half because they're actually thinking of the scale factor from B to A. And in that case, once again, we just do a match. If we think one half is a common wrong answer, then we'll put in a little message for students who write in one half. It's not artificial intelligence. But for many of the problems in the curriculums that we use, they have these explain questions. So once the student has typed in two and been told they're right, then they're asked to explain their reasoning. And in this case, they type in some, some written answer and um, we don't grade that. So this is where we need to enhance our, pro our product. This is how it's done today. So teachers get this open response scoring um, field and they're shown the responses from the student. They give them a score and then they write feedback to go with it. So that's how it's done today. What we're gonna do um, or what we've done actually, sorry, um, and I'm gonna tell you about is we've added AI, artificial intelligence onto that part of the process. So let's just take a moment to think about what, what is AI. So artificial intelligence is the study and development of computer systems to perform tasks that would normally require human intelligence. 
Okay, so what I just described to you uh, took human intelligence. The teachers had to read the responses from the students, give them a score, and then give them some feedback. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the computer and help the teacher do that. Um, and we're gonna use two parts of AI um, particularly. One is machine learning, and that is the study of algorithms and models uh, that computer systems use to perform tasks without explicit instruction. And we're also gonna use natural language processing. That is uh, the training of machines to read and derive meaning from human language. And um, so just a little heads up about machine learning. You can't have a machine do machine learning unless you have data and a big corpus of material for that machine to start doing that learning on. So as we're trying to, to do our work, that was the first thing we had to create. So in review, what are our goals? Our goals are to create a machine learning model that reads students' text to open response questions. So they need to read it and then enhance the math instruction through providing more efficient feedback. So first we've gotta be able to read the things that the student's writing, and then we have to be able to match it with some feedback that we want the teacher to give to the students. So this is how it starts. We have a real student problem. And as I mentioned earlier, for machine learning to work, we need to have a large corpus of, of material for the machine to start to read. So the first thing we do is we take the problems in assessments and we make sure that students are giving responses. Well, that's not hard. We have 500,000 students using our tool currently. And so as their teachers assign these problems, they are typing in uh, their responses to questions like, how do you know? So let's just take a moment to look at this math problem to make sure that we can follow because we're gonna be looking at this example together. Um, so in this problem, the, the grid is given blank. I have added the two rectangles. Um, the students are asked to draw those two rectangles using those coordinates. And then they're asked, are these two scale drawings of each other? So yes or no. So the students type that, they, they draw the pictures, they decide whether they are scale drawings of each other or not. And then they're asked, how do you know? So that's the part that we currently don't, we're not able to score automatically. But we do, we've, we've collected hundreds and thousands of these responses from students. So here's a couple, here's four examples of those hundreds of thousands. Um, uh, and student one said six over two equals three and 12 over six equals two. Student two, it doesn't have a straight line. Student three, they're not real objects. Okay, they're not cakes. Um, student four, they're not scale drawings because they do not start at the origin and they also don't go through a straight line. So there's something going on with the curriculum. The teachers are teaching something with the straight line. Students are trying to talk about that. These are the students' responses. So then what we did in our project was we got teachers and here's four, and then we had 12 actually in our project. Um, we recruited these teachers to actually begin to look at responses and write feedback and give scores. So this is what that looks like. And what we did to begin with was we gave all the 12 teachers the exact same student responses instead of what's normally done out in the field, which is the, the teachers are just giving responses to their students. But in order to get ourselves going, we had um, these 12 teachers write responses to the same, write, write feedback to the same responses. So what you see here are teacher A, teacher B, and teacher C's responses to those exact same, uh, with feedback messages to those exact same responses. So um, let's just read a couple out loud just to get ourselves uh, situated. Um, for that first one, the teacher A said, um, you are on the right track. The short length of the cakes are one to three ratio, but the longer lengths are a one to two ratio. Teacher B says, good, be specific in what these numbers represent. You are comparing the ratios of lengths to widths for each cake. There are different, therefore they are not proportional. And teacher C says, I see that you compared two of the side lengths. Can you expand, 
a little more on why you divided those two numbers. All right, so, and then we did this for all these. So there's a lot going on here. Next, we got the teachers back together again to do another task. And so these same teachers who had written these responses or written the feedback messages, we gave them a choice to pick. And sometimes their own uh, feedback messages were there, sometimes not. We just, we just picked three. So we picked three of the 12, put them in a grid and asked those 12 teachers to go back in and choose which ones they like the best, A, B, or C. This was beginning to train our machine learning models. So the machine learning models are going to learn, oh, this one is popular, this one's not popular, these ones are the same for this type of response. So the machine learning models are gonna look at the responses and also the, the feedback messages that were more popular and that were chosen. And we also gave a D option, none of the suggested choices, and those teachers could write their own uh, in response. They didn't like any of them, they could write their own or they could just say none of these choices. And we started looking for patterns. And it's kind of interesting here, the one I read out loud, student one, um, the, um, the most popular was actually a popular response. So, um, teacher B's feedback got 58% of the selections. So that one was, was, more, was, was rated more highly, where if you look at student two's response, they were pretty even uh, between the three, A, B, and C, and then 16% um, said that they wouldn't wanna do any of those three. So we started to look for patterns. Now, this is where things kind of go into the, the depths of AI, which is not my expertise. Um, I understand how we get here and I understand the problem that we're trying to solve with our artificial intelligence. Um, but I'm gonna do some hand waving here. This is where all the magic happens, all the code is written. But you can imagine what this, we, when you take what I just showed you and multiply it many times over, you have lots of data. Now you're using your machine learning um, algorithms. We're looking at all this data and we're trying to get the artificial intelligence to do the responses. So now let's take a look at quick comments in action. So once we did that, we, we began with our group of 12 teachers just to get ourselves started. And they did a tremendous amount of work. They did about 18,000 feedback messages um, amongst them. And that got us able to have that corpus that allowed us to do our machine learning to start. So let's just walk through what, we can, what happens today um, for those problems that have that quick comments um, AI working behind them. The student's view on your left is um, what they see. So they see the problem, they see their response, they fill that out. And then what you see on the right is the teacher's view. The teacher sees a, an assignment report. And remember what I said at the beginning, there's a many problems that we can score without using AI, just using matching, um, using computer programming, um, and we can, we can score those. So what you see in the, um, the first column with the checks and the Xs is scored by the computer. The next column is not scored. And so the teacher needs to do that work. The third column is another problem that was assigned to those students and that was scored. This I showed you before, this is the without AI um, field where the teachers can go in and add a score and add some feedback. Then we have with the AI. So with the AI, um, you have uh, natural language processing being done. This is you know, one of those, those, those fields that I was talking about earlier. And um, the natural language processing reads what the student has written. So a brand new student comes in, not one of the ones from before that we did the training on, but a brand new student comes in, solves this problem and writes their response. Then what our AI does is our AI reads that and then goes into the machine learned tool and is able to give a score. And then we take that score and we also give three messages. So these are automated messages that come from the artificial intelligence algorithm and they're presented to the student, the teacher. 
And the teacher can now more quickly respond to these open response questions. We do not feel confident yet to just give the students the feedback. Um, while we are, we've been doing this for about two years, um, and we still believe that it's necessary that before these, these scores and the feedback hit the students, we need the teacher to verify. And so the teacher says, yep, that score looks right. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna pick number two. They click on two and they can edit some more if they want, um, or they can leave it as it is. If they don't like the score, they can change it. And when they do change the score, they'll get different messages, different feedback messages suggested because they've, they've given a little bit more uh, to the, the product. What's really awesome is that going forward with all of the content in assessments in our library, teachers can do this without AI piece. Let's say there's not enough, there's not enough information for us to run our algorithms. So teachers start using assessments, they give responses, and eventually there's a tipping point when enough teachers have given enough feedback to enough responses for the same problem, and um, our machine algorithms can kick in. And then once that happens, then the AI version is gonna show up for those teachers and they can start to use the AI. So the way we've developed the system is that we will get more and more problems in our system that have uh, the AI algorithm working behind them. I'm gonna take a moment now and um, let Anthony Botello, who is the, um, the, the AI scientist, the, he's a computer scientist, um, I'm gonna let him speak about how the platform works so that you can really see, um, see it in action, like screenshots don't quite do its service. In this video, I will briefly introduce a new tool called Quick Comments that is currently in development and soon to be integrated into assessments. The Quick Comments tool is designed to help teachers more efficiently score and write feedback for student answers to open-ended problems. To begin, let's look at an example of one of these problems. In this problem, we see that there are two parts. Students are first asked to identify the scale factor from these two polygons. Afterward, students are asked to explain their reasoning. Once students have worked through these and other assigned problems, as a teacher, you are probably familiar that you can look at your student's work within the assessments item report. And that item report looks something like this. If you have assigned open response problems in the past, you may be familiar with the essay scoring page within assessments. You can access this page by clicking on the essay scoring link provided with each assigned open response problem located here at the top of the page. In the past, this would lead you to a scoring tool that looks something like this. Within this tool, it lists all of the student answers to that open-ended problem and allows you as a teacher to provide a numeric score and also write feedback to that student in response to that student's answer. Once quick comments has been made available to you, however, the essay scoring link in your item report will instead lead you to the quick comments tool. The Quick Comments tool leverages the power of artificial intelligence to offer guidance and suggestion when scoring and writing feedback for your students' work. Similar to the previous essay scoring page, Quick Comments displays each student answer here, but also offers a suggested numeric score based on how other teachers have scored similar student answers for this problem in the past. These suggested scores appear here in red and are not shown to the student until you, as a teacher, enter the score that you would like to give. You, as the teacher, are given full control over the feedback that your students receive. If I agree with this suggested score, for example, I can enter the value into the space provided, which is saved once I click off of this box. The student would then be able to view this given score within their assignment report. Additionally, Quick Comments offers three suggested messages that you can use while writing your feedback to students. By selecting an option, the feedback message is inserted into the teacher feedback text box. The feedback message is saved and made available to that student by clicking off of this box. You, as the teacher, can modify or edit this feedback in any way you see fit.
Similarly, if you do not like any of the feedback messages suggested, you can still write your own feedback message to your student without selecting any of the options. The tool will attempt to make these suggestions based on the student answer as well as the given score. So if you disagree with the suggested score, the suggested feedback will try to change as well. If we look at this, for example, I might disagree with the score of 4 and instead want to give a score of 3. When I click off of this box, the suggested feedback messages change to try to better match what I would want to give to that student as a feedback message. While still in development, the tool is able to learn and improve from the feedback that you provide to your students. We hope you enjoyed this brief look into this new development for assessments. So where are we? Um, we did our first pilot. We had these 12 teachers I was talking about. Um, and by 2020, they had written 18,000 messages. And one of our teachers that was working with us, she, she says, I have noticed a huge change in quick comments this week, making my grading and feedback process much faster. We surveyed some of the teachers who used um, the quick comments tool and the majority of them found that, that took them less time than the traditional essay scoring when they used the quick comments feature. So this saved them time, thus giving more feedback to the students. And like I mentioned before, we have a library of content that just is in assessments. And that library of content has problems that are scorable without artificial intelligence, but then it also has these open response questions. And we now have 5,000 of, a little over in fact, 5,000 of these open response questions that are in the curriculums that we have that now have enough data for the AI algorithms to kick out uh, support for the teachers. And that's just gonna grow. So take the, 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 the open response questions that aren't in that 5,000, teachers will still assign them and many teachers will still score and give feedback. And eventually there'll be enough scoring and feedback from the humans for the AI to pick that up and start to, to use the algorithms. We are also, constantly improving our algorithms. And I cannot really speak to the guts of what goes on in there, but we do have research papers that do. And so I encourage those of you who, who understand the AI part of this to go and read our, um, our research findings. So here's one uh, paper um, led by Sammy Baral, and you can get it by just typing in tiny.cc slash quick AI two. And um, here is another one um, led by John Erickson at Worcester Polytechnic Institute. Um, and you can read that and get the paper by typing in tiny.cc slash quick AI one. So thank you so much for coming to my talk. Um, I appreciate it. And I hope you learned a little bit about the process that we have gone through to add AI to an existing platform. Our goal, is to improve feedback for students as they do um, independent practice in math. And we recognize that the teachers are the most important part of the relationship between teachers and students. Um, and we wanna give them the support we can to make their jobs more efficient. Um, and we give immediate feedback on those computer scorable things just without AI. And now we're excited that we've added quick comments um, that allows teachers to give uh, much more efficient feedback on those open response questions. Thank you so much.